Welcome to this video in the Blueprint of Life topic. This video is going to be looking at two syllabus dot points, explain the relationships between the structure and behavior of chromosomes during meiosis and the inheritance of genes, and explain the role of gamete formation and sexual reproduction in variability of offspring. So we're really mostly going to be looking at meiosis in this video, and then we'll move on and have a look at some of those other things in class. So meiosis is a process of cell division. Like mitosis, however, cell division results in the diploid cells becoming haploid cells, which means that the number of chromosomes in the cells is reduced. It occurs in the ovaries and testes, and its job is to create sex cells, so the egg and sperm, which we also know as gametes. It happens before fertilization takes place, as obviously we need to make the sperm and the egg before they can come together. It helps to increase genetic variation through two processes known as crossing over and independent assortment, which we'll be having a look at a little bit later. Uh, we create four daughter cells, which are all unique. Unlike mitosis, where all the daughter cells were the same. Um, and just like mitosis, we have the processes of prophase, metaphase, anaphase. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But we also have prophase 2. Metaphase 2, anaphase 2, oops, and telophase 2. So unlike mitosis, uh, meiosis has a two-step process. So now we're going to look at the actual phases of meiosis. So as we can see at the top here, we have interphase, which is just like mitosis. So 90% of the cell life is spent during interphase. So during this time, the DNA is replicating, the cell is getting prepared to undergo either mitosis or meiosis. So in this case, we're looking particularly at meiosis. So the first stage of meiosis is known as meiosis 1. So we have prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1 and telophase 1. So we can see in prophase 1 we have crossing over occurring. So we can see if we have a look that the chromosomes are touching one another and they're actually passing bits of information from one chromosome to the other. So they get wound around each other and almost then break off and create new um, chromatids. But at this point they're still together in that synapsis which is the x-shaped chromosome that we know of during metaphase one the tetrad so that's four tetrad being four so two sets of homologous chromosomes with two chromatids each so one of these strands of the x is known as a chromatid and they come together to form our x-shaped chromosome so they line up along the middle of the cell during metaphase so if we remember Metaphase means that the cells, so the chromosomes are lining up along the middle of the cell, then that will help you in remembering the steps. Also, during metaphase, we have the process of independent assortment taking place. So, this means that the chromosomes can line up in any particular fashion they like. Okay, so one homologous pair, so in this picture, the blue is lined up on the left, the purple on the right. It could be the complete other way around. Uh, in the video that's on the presentation on the blog, we see that with 23 sets of chromosomes, we can have over 8 million combinations of how the chromosomes line up along the middle of the cell, so leading to massive chances of genetic variation. During anaphase, if you remember anaphase is away, the chromosomes get pulled, or the, in this case still the homologous pairs, get separated and move away from each other to opposite ends of the chromosome. And then in telophase, 
we can see that there's a new nuclear membrane forming around the individual sets of chromosomes. So once telophase 1 is over, we move straight into prophase 2. So meiosis 2 is the second cell division stage. So prophase 2, unlike prophase 1, there's no crossing over, but the chromosomes condense, the nuclear membrane dissolves, and we get ready for the rest of the process to take place. In metaphase 1, remember, metaphase M for the middle, the chromosomes line up along the metaphase plate or the equator of the cell. So we can see here that they're lined up in a nice single fashion. So at this point, we're still in this X shape with the two sister chromatids attached. During anaphase, they're moving away, but this time our X is being divided into two separate sister chromatids. Okay, so in telophase, we can see now that we're starting to form four completely different cells as the nuclear membrane reforms, the cytoplasm starts to pinch. So in cytokinesis, we have four daughter cells, haploid, so they only have 23 chromosomes instead of 46, and they have one of these chromosomes from our original X. And each one of them will be different due to the process of crossing over that's taken place and the recombination of genes. So crossing over is a process that takes place during prophase one. So that's when the homologous chromosomes start to pair up with each other. So a homologous set of chromosomes is one chromosome from the mother, one chromosome from the father. They come next to each other and what happens is the genetic information on one of the sister chromatids of each chromosome gets switched as they wind around each other. So if we didn't have this take place, then the, the genotype or the allele combinations of the resulting gametes would all be the same no matter um, what sort of went on beyond the process of prophase 1. So if we were to have a look at this diagrammatically, we have our maternal chromosomes that will make red, our paternal chromosomes that will make blue, and then we can assign these particular alleles. So our maternal ones will be big A and big B, and our paternal ones will be little a and little b. So what happens is our outside chromatid doesn't get touched, but our inside chromatid ends up crossing over with the one from the other homologous chromosome at a point that we call the chiasmata, chiasmata. Okay, so that's the point where crossing over takes place. So this chromosome or chromatid doesn't change. This one we can see now that our big B is moved over here, our little a and our little b is moved over here, and our little a and little b hasn't changed. Okay, so when we have a look, we can see now that we have four completely different chromosomes. This one with the genotype big A, big B, this one big A, little b, this one little a, big b, and this one little a, little b. So when the gametes are formed, we have four completely different chromosomes that will be unique from one another. So they've completely changed the original genotypes. Well, yeah, we've got our original genotypes still there, but we now have these two new ones being created. Okay, so the last thing we need to look at is independent assortment, which takes place during metaphase one. Okay, so we can see here in our top image that we have four sets of chromosomes and we've got big G, big G, little G, little G, big Y, big Y, and little Y, little Y. So as we can see in the first picture, our dominant alleles, or the chromosomes carrying the dominant alleles have lined up on the top, and the chromosomes carrying our recessive alleles have lined up along the bottom. So this means that our four, sorry, our um, resulting daughter cells will contain the alleles from the top, or the alleles from the bottom, so they'll either have big, so the two dominant alleles or the two recessive alleles. Now in our image at the bottom, we can see now that the big G, big G has lined up on the same side of the equator as the little y, little y, 
and our little g, little g has lined up on the big, same side as our big y, big y. So that means that we're now creating four completely different gametes to the four that were made up here. So mathematically speaking, with 23 chromosomes, all that can line up in completely different ways, we end up with 8 million different combinations that could result. So it talks about that a little bit more in the video if you have a look at that. And that brings us to the end of this video, so thanks for watching.